Okay, guys, so here's the example. There's a monopolist and the monopolist sells packs of bottled water. All right, well, if you don't like this example, fine. Go with, uh, for example, internet packages. But anyway, here I'm going to stick to this example. So the packs of bottled water, this is what the monopolist sells. So here the, the cost of the monopolist is this function. Very simple. Uh, there's no fixed cost. So C of, I'm uh, sorry, the cost of producing X amount of bottled water is equal to 0.5 times X, all right? And for simplicity, well, I mean, you cannot sell, for example, 4.5 uh, uh, bottles of water, right? I mean, what the heck half a bottle means? But for simplicity, let's assume that X can take non-integer values as well. Trust me, that makes life much easier because the integer problems are always difficult to work with. All right, so uh, therefore the monopolist profit is price minus, right? You, you, you produce a package and then this package is sold at a price P. So P minus 0.5X is going to be the profit of the monopolist. Well, there are two types of customers. Don't forget, there's just one customer, one agent. However, it could be either a customer with high willingness to pay or customer with low willingness to pay. And each is equally likely. So with one half probability, it is type one. With one half probability, it is type two. Well, type one customer has this utility. So this is the V function, all right? So the utility depends on the X and the P, obviously. So this is uh, the utility of the first type, and this is the utility of the second type. So as you see, the only difference, the functional forms are very similar. The only difference is that whenever they both consume the same amount of X, a customer one gets higher utility. So therefore his willingness to pay is higher than customer of type two, all right? So this is the high willingness to pay guy. This is the low willingness to pay guy. So the question is, what is the optimal uh, package or contract here? So instead of saying contract, I'm gonna call them bundles or packages. So what is the profit maximizing packages? Well, we're going to analyze this uh, problem in several steps. The first step is, what is the first best, right? Meaning, what is the maximum profit the monopolist can achieve in this environment? Well, remember the definition of first best. First best is the outcome when monopolist can actually distinguish the types of the customer. So imagine, again, imagine, probably this can never be the case, but the monopolist can distinguish the type of each customer. So whenever the monopolist sees this customer, the monopolist can say, okay, this is the type one guy, this is the type two guy. And therefore, whenever type one guy comes to his store, he sort of brings the package for him. All right, I mean, the, the, the package that is designed for him. And then whenever the type two guys comes into his store, he observes the type and then he brings uh, the, 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 the appropriate package that is designed for type two. So in this environment that all the information is perfectly observable by everyone, what should be the package for type one? What should be the package for type two? All right, well, for type one, what is the optimization problem for the monopolist? The monopolist is going to solve the following problem. Maximize profit, all right? A subject to a constraint, obviously. There's gonna be a constraint. So. First, before going to the constraint, what is the profit? Well, profit is this, right? P minus 0.5X, all right, P minus 0.5X. That's it, I want to maximize this as a monopolist. By choosing what? What are the choice variables here? Be careful, well, the monopolist can choose not only X, but also P, all right? Because, again, this is a very simple environment, there's no competition, there's no uh, price, if fixed by the markets, all right? So the, 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 the monopolist is not a price taker. The monopolist determines the price. The monopolist also determines what pack he is going to produce or she is going to produce. So therefore, they the maximize profit by choosing both X and P. 
Well, subject to, as I said, there should be some constraint. What is this constraint? Well, subject to the following. Uh, remember, if I, well, obviously, if you look at this function, it's very simple, right? P minus something. Choose P as high as possible. And choose X as low as possible. Like X zero, P is like, well, I mean, almost infinite, very huge. Can I do that? Well, of course you can choose P very large, X very small, but this time the customer of type one is not gonna buy it. All right, so here, uh, I forgot to say this, outside option is zero for uh, principal and customer agent, all right? So meaning if there's no trade between the monopolist and the customer, both monopolist and the customer are going to get zero payoff, zero utility for simplicity. All right, if you don't make any sell, you're gonna get zero utility. And if the customer doesn't buy, he's gonna get zero utility, all right? So therefore, if you charge a very high price and if you basically sell zero amount of bottled water, well, this guy will actually prefer not to buy it. Why? Well, because if X is zero and P is very large, if the customer buys this bundle, he's gonna get negative utility. But in fact, by not buying it, he can get zero utility. So don't forget, not buying is always an option for type one. So therefore you have to incorporate this constraint into the optimization problem. So subject to therefore, the utility of type one, uh, four squared of X minus P should be greater than or equal to zero. As simple as this. Well, how can I, well, before going to the solution, let me state uh, what if customer is type two instead of type one? Oops, sorry. Well, what's the difference? Well, the only difference is the constraint, all right? Uh, by the way, we call this uh, individual, individual rationality constraint. All right, or IR constraint, individual rationality. Uh, well, because it is irrational to buy a bundle that gives you negative utility. So if you are buying a bundle which consists of X and P, well, your utility of buying this bundle should be at least uh, zero, okay? So we call this individual rationality constraint. Well, for type two, the problem is the same. The monopolist is going to maximize its profit. Well, the profit function is always the same, right? At least in these two scenarios, by choosing X and P subject to, so S dot T means subject to, this time it's type two customer. So three squared of X minus P greater than or equal to zero. So this is the individual rationality of type two. So let me call it IR2, and this one is IR1, the individual rationality constraint of type one. All right, so again, this is how we determine the optimal bundles or optimal packages for type one and type two customers. Well, how do we solve these problems? I think these are simple. Um, well, how so? Well, you can write down the Lagrangian, all right, and you can, uh, or, or Kuntucker as you wish, and then uh, take the, uh, find the first order conditions and then solve them. But you know what? You don't really have to worry about uh, Lagrangian or Kuntucker because you can solve those problems much simpler. How so? Well, here is the trick. Well, the first trick is the following. If you look at the profit function of the monopolist, it's linear on price, so, right? I'm, I'm not, I mean, the P doesn't have square or square root. So it's linear on price and it's also linear on X. So therefore, the higher P I pick as a monopolist, the higher profit I will get. All right. Uh, and obviously the lower X I pick, the lower, uh, uh, the higher profit I'm gonna get. So here, what happens is therefore, I do not want to leave any surplus to my customer. Why am I leaving any surplus to customer? Meaning, what if this is the case? I mean, I offer my customer X and P a package where his utility is strictly positive. Well, is this optimal for me? 
Obviously not. Why? Well, because I can increase the price, right? Um, such that this four squared of X, I don't change X, keep X same. I increase the price and I decrease this, but it's still greater than or equal to zero. So once I increase P, but keep X the same, that means higher profit for me. So if you're maximizing this function, you should actually leave no surplus to the customer, which means you have to pick X and P such that this constraint is binding, meaning this term is equal to zero, all right? You leave no surplus to the customer. This is the XP that maximizes this function. Obviously, same here. All right, so once I have this binding constraint, what can I do? Well, uh, we use substitution method. Use the constraint, send P to the other side. P is equal to four squared of X, all right? Well, plug this into my optimization problem. So it becomes maximize P, which is four squared of X minus 0.5 X. So here I basically reduce the unknowns to one. Instead of P and X now, there's only one parameter I need to choose, which is X. How can I maximize this simple function? Uh, well, simple, you, you, the first order conditions. What does that mean? That means take the derivative of this function, which is four times uh, one half, times x to the power minus one half, minus 0.5, set it equal to zero, and solve for it. So this is two. So what do I have here? I have two divided by square root of x equals 0.5. All right, by the way, 0.5 is nothing but one over two. So what do I have? If I do the cross product, that means square root of x is equal to four. So that means x is equal to two. Hmm. So once I find x, I can find P as well. Um, I am sorry, uh, here is the mistake. Once X is four, <laughs> square root of X is four, X is equal to 16. I'm sorry about this mistake. So once I find X, I can plug it back here and then find the price. So P is therefore equal to four times square root of X, which is square root of 16. So therefore price is also 16. So that's it. Let me write it down uh, here. Oh uh, yeah, let's write it here. So if the customer is type one, the package is going to be the following XP, which is equal to 1616. Meaning if the customer is type one, the person, the customer has high willingness to pay, the optimal bundle for the monopolist is to produce a pack of bottled water, which includes 16 bottled water, and then the price should be $16. So think of like $1 per bottle, all right? Well, what if it is type two customer? Well, I do exactly the same thing, right? I'm going to use the substitution method once again. How so? Well, remember the constraint. So according to this constraint, the price this time has to be equal to, oops, sorry about this. The three is outside of the square. So it's three squared of X. So then plug this into the profit function. So I have maximized by choosing X, P is equal to three squared of X minus 0.5 X. I'm, for, I'm sorry for my uh, uh, typo here. So it has to be 0.5 X. Right, this because this is what profit of firm is. So how do I maximize it? Well, let's take the derivative. It's three divided by two squared of X minus 0.5 equals zero. So if you solve this, what do I have? I have the following three over two uh, equals one over two squared of X. So one house, one house will cancel out. So X is equal to nine. So once I know X, I can find P. So P has to be therefore three times square root of nine. So P has to be nine as well. So you know what, for type two, the package has to be nine and nine. So once again, the first best means 
the monopolist can observe the customer's type. So once the customer enters to its store, the monopolist realizes that it is the uh, high type or type one. In this case, uh, the monopolist is going to go back, bring a pack of bottled water, which has 16 of them, and the monopolist will say, give me $16. And according to my calculation, the buyer is going to buy this pack, all right? Well, if, however, the customer is a low type customer or type two customer, well, this time the monopolist is not gonna get this 16 uh, uh, pack of uh, bottled water. He's gonna bring this, uh, the nine, uh, the pack of nine, and then the, the price he's gonna charge is nine dollars, all right? So, if this is the case, well then what is the profit the monopolist can make? Well, simple, remember profit is equal to price minus 0.5x. So, if the customer is a type one customer, the monopolist profit, let me denote it by pi, is going to be 16 minus 16 divided by two, eight. So therefore profit is eight. However, if the customer is a type two customer, the profit is going to be nine minus nine divided by two. So it's 4.5, all right? Well, the monopolist is gonna get either this profit or that profit, all right? Depending on the customer's type. Uh, cannot be both, obviously, because the customer is either type one or type two. But this is exactly how we solve the first best.